So it's just like, she was all just like, I don't like her perfume. It's like slight foreshadowing. It's like, mm, I don't, I, I don't know about this woman. Her gut instinct tells her that she, she's probably not good. She, but maybe she's, turns out she's much worse than Rena could have possibly imagined. When I got home, the door was locked. I used my key to get in and I found a note in the living room. Something came up so I have to go. I'm going to eat out tonight, is what the note said. This wasn't the first time he'd done something like this. Each time he only told me he had to go to Ockneymouth for something. But I knew the real reason, because I heard him talking on the phone once. Rina's son must have had some free time between jobs and asked him out to have dinner together. Well, also, since now that we know that Rina is, uh, you know, sort of in a kind of... Is it called a sugar daddy or whatever kind of relationship with... Who is this, the guy who is essentially Sotoko's freaking uncle? That piece of shit. If you remember, at the very beginning of Tatari Garoshi, there was an unusual scene at the start that's kind of just like foreshadows how things were going to play out. If you remember that scene now, like think of it with what we now know. And you kind of like think it's like, oh, so that's who that was. Oh, yeah. Oh, kind of thing, you know? Everything all kind of connects together once like you get further through the arcs, you know? And Rena said must have had some free time between jobs and asked him out to have the internet together. That bitch! I used a sigh, looked at the new living room I hated and went to my room. I thought back over what I just heard at the coffee house. I tried to rationalize the meaning of her actions there. Maybe she had to pretend to be a bad person because she was being threatened by the man. Now I think she, just like uh, Karsai said, she's a skunk! But even after the man she called Tetchan left the table, she continued to threaten the guys and push them into signing the loan contract immediately. She had a different way of approaching it though, isn't it? It's like, like a good cop, bad cop kind of thing. It's like, no, 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 I, I, I'll be threatening, but in a very different type of way. Where it's like, no, everything will be fine, just sign the contract, everything will be fine. While Tepe's more, sign the fucking contract or I'll kill ya! kind of attitude, you know. But they're both shitty people. If she was threatened to play along with a man, she wouldn't have done that. If she was pretending to be a bad person, she could have shown a little bit of mercy or sympathy when he left her alone with them. It's like holding water in a bowl you made with your hands. No matter how sturdy you made the bowl, water would leak from your fingers. Mercy and sympathy leak out from you. But nothing, not even a drop of water, leaked from Rinasan. Her hands weren't even moist, they were all dried up. There was no water that could leak through those hands. Rinasan was threatening those guys as much as the man was. Nyla was leading the other along. They were doing it together. That was it. Rinasan is a bad person. My brain sells us up the idea with applause. She's a shitty human being, whoa! And all this time you just thought she had shit perfume, but she she was a shit as her perfume. She's a shitty person. After all, I always hated Rena Sam. I just couldn't accept the feeling because my father liked her. But she was a gold digger. Worse than the usual gold diggers, even. And at that moment, I could finally accept it. She's a bad person, just like my mother. Now, I think she's worse than that. Much worse. She's an existence that will ruin everything and destroy my father's happiness just by being with him. But I wonder if my father would understand that Rena's son is a bad person if I told him so. My father likes her so much that he would jump over a cliff if she asked him to. He thinks everything she does or says is great, and he interprets everything about her in a positive way. He would text her and praise her about her asking. Yeah, that's a pretty shit situation that she's found herself in here. I mean, she could, like, tell her father about what who she really is, but he's so infatuated with her that he probably wouldn't even believe Rena if she, like, 
even supply proof of some sorts. I'm not a kid anymore. I understand how a woman can tame a man. It's a uh, different... It's different from love. Love is about trying to build a relationship. Taming is just a way of satisfying the lust to dominate. She's just trying to make him into a slave. She's a fucking straight up sociopath. Women can deceive men, even my father. And they can use dirty methods to ins air men like they're following a manual. It's the weak point all men are born with. Even with a strong will, they can't resist it. That's why we hate those women who exploit that weak point to deceive men. That's why I couldn't bring myself to like Rina San. For the sake of argument, let's assume I acknowledge an un unliberated love like that. But they would only be as long as it was love. If it wasn't love, it was just a method to threaten and squeeze money out of him. I would never forgive her. I remember their conversation at the coffee house. In a sense, said that my father is a big spender. In fact, I think he spends more money without hesitation than before he met Renasan. I was happy that he started to regain an interest in going out into the world again. Now I don't know whether I should be happy or not. He probably wasn't a big spender originally. He's probably a bit more, you know, less of that before he met her. He controls the money of the Rigu family overall, but since I do the grocery shopping, he often gives me his bank books so that I can withdraw money. Yeah, it's just like if anything, it's Renner that's really using it most, because he just like lets Renner do the shopping and all that, and obviously he wouldn't have any reason to really spend a lot of money. Because of that, I know where he keeps his bank book, his personal seal, and all of the stuff. They're in one of his drawers, which he usually locks. I know where he hides the key, and I know the combination of the cash box inside the drawer. He might be coming back soon, so I felt a little nervous. But I had to make sure. I opened the cash box, which had some bank books, personal seals, stamps, and unused postcards. I removed everything from the cash box to get at the bank books. Then I found something new. On the bottom of the box, there was a bundle of new 10,000 yen bills. Its thickness wasn't something I could ignore. There was also a paper wrapper that looked like it had been bundling the bills. The wrapper had a stamp that said it was a bundle of a million yen. He usually kept some cash at home because it was troublesome to go to the bank every time he needed money. But it was unusual, usually around 100,000 yen to 200,000 yen at most. He never keeps such a big amount of money at home before, because he knows it's unsafe. The extraordinary amount of 10,000 yen bills was abnormally intimidating. I tried to open the bank book, but my fingers got numb all of a sudden. Part of me was trying to deny the things I heard at the coffee house. It wasn't because I wanted to defend my father or even Rinasa. It was because I didn't want to believe my father was the husband in Imiza the black males were talking about. I opened the bank book. The last time I saw it was about two or three months ago. Just countless withdrawals since that day. I probably wouldn't normally understand what those numbers meant. But I felt in that moment as if the ten different digits were speaking to me. They were a series of cruel pictures. Start with some understandable expenses that I assume represents dinners or something. But then the amount of money starts to become nine round numbers, like a five or a ten. I can tell by looking at the dates he withdrew money that he wanted to have a certain amount of cash on hand when he went out with Renaissance. Among those expenses, a big number appeared all of a sudden. It was too much money to spend on a date, hundreds of thousands of yen. I looked at the date of the withdrawal, and I traced it back to my, in my memory. I remembered. Around that time, Rina San was talking about moving into a new apartment. I know the market rate of rental apartments in Okina. You need to put down two safety deposits and two payments for key money in order to rent an apartment. That amount of withdrawal sounded reasonable now. He paid the whole down payment for a new apartment. After that, big numbers appeared one after another. I could tell that they were for congratulatory gifts for a new apartment or something. The numbers got bigger and bigger. It looked like at first he was withdrawing only the amount of money needed, but then he started withdrawing big amounts all at once because he knew he was going to use it someday anyway. The change meant only one thing. He lost his sense of the value of money. The balance kept going down, and I started feeling anxious about what's going to happen if he continued spending money like that. But then, 
I saw a deposit of a big amount of money into the accounts. Where did that money come from? There was only one thing I could think of. I opened the other bank. It was easy, like a puzzle for kids. It was like playing with an easy jigsaw puzzle that comes with huge pieces that you don't even have to put together to see what the whole picture looks like. My father was using money from his time deposits. In other words, the settlement my mother paid my father when she divorced him. To him, it's cursed money. But understand if you wanted to use it to get a new life. But that was just an excuse to use the money from his time deposits. Money is money. Even though it's his divorce, our money, it's still important money for our future. But isn't it usually like, when it comes to divorce, someone, usually the guy, gets screwed over money-wise, but he seems to have, I mean, the divorce, like, fucking ruined the man, mentally, but, from the sounds of it, he got a decent amount of money out of it, at the very least. Even though it's cursed money to him, that doesn't mean he can waste it. Big expenses start appearing when many expensives, upwards of six digits. For some reason I could immediately tell they were for buying electric appliances and furniture. He must have been buying everything she asked him to. If from the beginning Rena Sen was only seeing to check if he could end up being a big catch, she must have been trying to find how much money she could squeeze out of him. And my father bought her anything she wanted, no matter how expensive it was, so she probably thinks of him as the perfect catch now. The numbers in the bank book told me so. The simple numbers and dates in the bank book had started talking to me. Around the time he started withdrawing big amounts of money, Rena Sen started coming to the house more often, and she also started spending the nights. Rena Sen, my father was at first just a guy who spends big money, but around that time she landed her big cash. My father used to refer to her as my friend in Okima, first, but he started referring to her as Rina Slam around that time. It was partially his fault. But he was betrayed by his beloved wife, and he was feeling hurt and down for a long time. It's also partially my fault. That's why I didn't want to blame him. And he's not that good looking either. There's no way he's immune to women. He must have not been able to resist an attractive lady who aggressively approached him when he was feeling down. He's crazy about Rina Slam, and he can see nothing older than her. I can't blame him, because Rina San trained him to be that way. You can kind of see how something like that happens. And that just makes it just like... These kind of people are like some of the worst type of people. I put the bank books and the other things back into the cash box. This cash box is just like my father's heart. Rina San is eating up the contents. What should I do? Think, Rena Ryugu. If I tell him about Rena San's scheme, no, I probably wouldn't do anything. The whole point of training an animal is that it won't run away from its owner, even when a door is wide open. My father probably won't leave his cage even if I open the door. Should I confront Rena San about her plot when he's with her? The results would be the same. Rena San would run behind his back. He'd probably try to protect her. If she pressed her breast against his back, he'd protect her no matter what. I couldn't make this a problem between me and him. First of all, I was trying to get rid of Rina San for his sake. We got mad at each other if we could give the advantage to Rina San. It would be like I was putting myself into a trap. Then, that meant I couldn't make him do anything. If I couldn't make him break up with Rina San, I'd have to talk to Rina San directly. So instead of making my father fight, I'd have to fight in his place. But how? That guy, Katsai-san, who was with Shichan today, seemed to know the man Rena san was with. I wonder if I can somehow meet him again. He looked scary, but I was introduced to him as a friend of Michan. Michan has a lot of power around here. There's no way he would treat me badly. I wonder if he could tell Rena san and the man to back off from my father. That helped me a lot, but I didn't know how I could meet him again. I could ask Michan for help, but I don't want her to know about my situation. The problem of the Ryuga family. It's nobody's business but mine. Yeah, this is better than it is this a battle that I'd have to fight alone. I regretted my parents' divorce. I wept about the tragedy I could have prevented if I had tried. I wasn't going to weep this time. I wasn't going to let the chance slip away. This time I would fight for my happiness.
transition Igarashi when they cry Kai Property estimate tips Achievement unlocked a husband in Hinamizawa Look at all that cash The green You know, I find that weird, you know? It's like, probably more of a US thing, really, with the dollars and all that. But here in the UK, when it comes to, you know, notes and all that, it's less green, more freaking purple. It's like, if it's green, it's like, oh, those are just five pound notes. Purple, oh, 20 pound notes, now that's, that's worth more. And I can't, I'm not sure if we still have 50 pound notes here in the UK or not. I haven't seen one in a long ass time. So I don't know if they even exist anymore. Property estimates. Dear Ritzko Mamiya-sama. Executive Housing Corporation. Attached estimates. We thank you for your past visits and inquiries to our office. We've included the estimate for the property you inquired about. Basic information. Property name, Palace of Versailles, room 707, property code 14M1421, property type, modern condominium. Layer 2 LDK, address Shishimone, city, Koiwacho to Jom. Transportation, blah, line, Gorgara station, 5 minutes on foot. Cost, holy shit! I don't even know how to read that kind of number. Jeez, that is a huge number. Maintenance fee, 20,000 yen. Other southeast corner room, elevator floor. Jesus Christ. Condominium fitness club membership included. Thank you for your interest in this property that is outrageously expensive. The area around Gorgora Station is a prime real estate zone for luxury condominiums. Along with future planned developments, the real estate values in and around the Gorgora Station are expected to rise. This property is not an exception. As a result, many prospective buyers are interested in this property. Hence, we'd like for you to understand that the selection process for this property will be done via lottery. Also, we also offer celebrity member preventable treatment, granting highly improved chances through additional lottery entries. Please feel free to inquire with our agents for more details. Executive Housing Corporation Celebrity Account Manager Kawabata Jesus Christ! They're gonna... well, obviously that's the intention, isn't it? They gotta milk him for all his worth, all the money they can possibly get, and put him shit ton into debt, and just blackmail the share, and that's just as horrible. Oh, you're talking about Kasai san. He's Shion's watchdog. A watchdog? Really? <laughs> yeah, he is. She tends to do crazy things. So one needs to have someone watch her all the time. I think you're as crazy as Shion. Get your coon gun into the conversation and end up making a lot of noise, teasing each other like they always do. Nah, I'd say Shion's more crazy than me on. Me on my need to sound like that man cast I sign is some sort of territory boss in Nokima. It wouldn't be easy for me to meet him in person. But because he's she's Chan's watchdog, I might be able to find a way. The problem though is that I don't have any connection to Shi-Chan either. We hang around every once in a while whenever she comes to Nimizar, but I've never called or visited her. I have no idea how we can meet. Even if I could meet Kasai-san, there's no guarantee that he'd help me. He seems like the kind of person who doesn't like to gossip about ours. He told me about Rina-san at the coffee house only because Shi-Chan pushed him to. Plus, the situation could grow worse very quickly while I waited for the chance to meet him, so any help he might offer I could come to late. I remember Kasai san told me that, as her next step, Rina Chen usually try uses her partner to threaten their catch. That would signify the end of her performance. 
They were going to take all of my father's money. I wasn't feeling a sense of crisis yet, but that time might be coming very soon. Even as I was at school taking a class peacefully, that man might already be at the house right to this moment, threatening my father to hand over his bank books. Once I became I become anxious, I get more and more anxious. I could feel a big pressure on my chest as if the ceiling had collapsed on me. Yeah, that's yeah, anxiety, yeah. Man, I'm so bored. My life is too peaceful. Oh, 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 how, how, how better than Renner's situation you have. It's Skate Sakoon talks to me, yawning. Is that so bad? I'd love to have a peaceful life. that bore me. I don't. I wish some kind of big event would happen, like aliens come to attack us or something. I'm not saying I like to have something like that every week, but at least at the end of every month or so. Oh, and that doesn't include our monthly tests. The aliens really did come, destroyed the Earth, and burned all of the Sour. Would you be satisfied? Would you? Uh, no, that's not what I mean. I'm just saying that I want for some kind of excitement because I'm so bored. He had no idea of what I had been going through, of course, and that's why he says that. Why didn't you tell them about it? They're your friends, man, and they're very, very, you know... Supportive, but I was still irritated by his uh, insensitivity. I couldn't understand why he wouldn't be satisfied with such a peaceful life. He never has to doubt that today and tomorrow will be as fun as yesterday. Well, it depends on the arc, Renner. He's he's been through quite a fair amount of shit as well. I was all too aware that boring and peaceful days could be destroyed all of a sudden, especially when you foreshadow the fuck out of it. I knew that boring and peaceful days could come to an end all of a sudden because your mum wanted to divorce your dad. I knew that you could feel like you didn't belong anywhere in your own house because your dad had gotten a new girlfriend. Even so, you had to repeat the same kind of day over and over again. That's why I want to live every day happily in order to be prepared when the world comes to an end. I'm jealous of you, you know. You look so happy all the time. I wish I had that kind of skill. You're jealous of me, huh? How do you do it? How do you uh, live every day not being bored but being happy? If it really is a skill, I'd love to learn how. <laughs> That's easy. All you need to do is to realize. Realize what? There's no way you could realize it. And it was probably better that he didn't, because that meant he was truly happy. Tell him, man. You just need to realize that your happy days will one day come to an end. Tell them, you fool! The three of us walked home from school like we always did. Mei Chen said goodbye to us at the corner of the street where she took her separate way home. She walked away waving, but I chased after her. Mei Chen! Hmm, what? Mei Chen apparently thought she dropped something and she looked around to see what she dropped. Uh, I, I almost forgot to tell you. I saw Chi Chen and Kasai San yesterday at a coffee house. I picked up something that Kasai San dropped while he was there. Of course, he hadn't dropped anything. I was lying. If I could meet him, I'd just show him whatever, tell him I thought it was his, and apologize for my mistake. Oh, well, thank you then. I'll send it over to him in that case. Uh, I'll give it to him, uh, back to him in person. Eh? Mei Chen looked surprised. I couldn't blame her. I'd met him only once. It's weird to want to give something back in person to someone you barely know. Well, that's all right. But why? Oh, he had this cute beard and those cute sunglasses. I'm so crazy about cute things. Oh. Could I fudge my true intentions with my cute mode? I tried it anyway. Mei Chen usually takes words at their face value, and indeed, she seemed to buy it. <laughs> Please don't pull out his beard and take it home with you. So, do you think I can meet him? Well, I have no idea if he's busy or not. I'll ask him when he's coming to Enemy's Hour next. I need to know when as soon as possible. Of course, I wasn't going to say I wanted to meet him today, but at least tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. What are you guys doing? Hmm. <laughs> 
It seemed like Rena found a new love. No hope. Really, how interesting. I want to hear about it too. I didn't want Sawyer to leave it up in the air, so I told her, I think I should give it back to him as soon as possible. I'm sure he's looking for it too. Me Chan said, okay, twice and walked away waving. I hadn't yet thought about how I was going to ask for help when I would meet him. He seems to be in a high position and Rena San and her partner. If he agreed to help me, it would be very encouraging. But there was a possibility that he'd tell me he didn't want to interfere in other people's private matters. He could just say the whole thing was another love triangle between a father, his daughter, and his lover. Bye, Rena. See you tomorrow. Yes, see you tomorrow. I said goodbye to Ketchikun and walked home alone. After Ketchikun was gone, everything went quiet and my head became clear. What I needed at that moment was quiet time to think about what I should do from then on. What will Rena do about this horrible situation she finds? Well, we'll find out in due time. It's just like, the plot got pretty dark pretty quickly, didn't it? It's usually the case. But this time it isn't really around the Watanagashi Festival. That's what is usually around, isn't it? You see the Watanagashi Festival take place and then shit hits the fan immediately after. This time the festival hasn't even happened in it. And then already you got that. I think the same was kind of the case for, uh, yeah, it was in Tatari Goroshi. Similar thing happened there. It doesn't have to, you know, get to the Watanagashi Festival for shit to hit the fan. I mean, then the question arc to this answer arc on Ikakushi, you saw the festival, but, you know, it makes sense for that because that was the very first arc. So, you know, you got to introduce shit. So, like, shit only really hit the fan after the festival, but there were always, like, bits and pieces like building up the tension throughout it as well and Watanagashi obviously was all about that as well you know it had little shades of like ooh ominous and then once the festival kicked in it was like oh shit it's gonna BAM and then the answer off to that Mekashi was like holy shit this was what was really going down kind of thing and then Himatsubushi was like, ah, uh, well, this, that was, that predated it by quite a considerable amount of time. So, yeah, that was more of a prequel, that one, so, didn't count. But anyways, I'll see you next time, viewers. See you next time.